I wanted to come on and talk a little bit about something that I made a video on the other day, which was the Xbox uh, rumor about um, Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves possibly coming over to other platforms. Um, I feel like I got everything that I needed to say out on that video. Um, I watched it back a few times and... The thing about me with these videos is I don't have anything written down. I don't script anything. It's all just off the top of my head. Um, that was like a 20, 30 minute video. Um, and it took me about two hours to get all that out. I, I do have a habit of if I do make a mistake or if I fumble a word, it plays on the back of my mind. And I'm like, that comes across like, you know, I, I realize that I don't have a huge vocabulary and I didn't do very well at school. I was too busy playing video games and going out drinking ironically so i realized that i'm not like the most articulate person on the internet and it's been pointed out to me a couple of times in the comments and it's like that's fine i i i'm, I'm aware of that i've got quite thick skin um but with these videos i kind of just have an idea of what I want to say and I'm not I'm not talking like I'm sort of part of the, um, the media or anything like that I don't have that much of an ego I'm not sort of like I've been playing video games from from a very young age and I know what I like and I know what I don't like and anytime I sort of make a topical video I'm sort of talking as a consumer um I like to think that I'm kind of balanced when it comes to sort of criticizing these platforms i've criticized playstation i've criticized xbox and i've criticized nintendo um obviously when you put yourself out there on the internet to be um viewed and watched and when you are talking about something in a negative light whether it be one of the three consoles Thankfully, I'm not a big enough channel for to get a lot of, you know, backlash on things like that. And in many ways, I'm sort of glad that I'm kind of a small channel. I don't have to deal with, um, you know, the, the... I mean, I just think about all these huge channels that have all these views and comments and stuff and going through all these comments and sieving through them and everything and getting that much sort of heat or... Um, positivity, in a way, as well, if, you, if, you, if people, you know, enjoy your content and stuff. Um... But it does put a target on your back. I've noticed when it's on Twitter as well, if I'm ever speaking negative about it. Recently, I've been obviously talking about the Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves possibly coming over. Lost a few followers there. You know, if this was me two two years ago, I would be unfollowing them people as well. But I couldn't give a shit about my follow account. It fluctuates, you know, up and down. I, I, I'm, I'm past that um, point of, of, of Twitter, of caring. And I just sort of want to sort of just put things out that are just relevant to me. I don't want to talk about every single bit of news because I don't want to... I do want to do some gameplay, you know, um, playthroughs and streaming. I, I think I'm going to prefer to do the playthroughs more and record it like this. But I'm very sort of... I'm a, I'm a bit of a harsh critic on myself and... You know, when I made that video about Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves... I was just talking off the top of my head, like I said, and I was just sort of viewing things of what I think are happening and, and from a customer standpoint. But <clears throat> it's always quite refreshing to... And I do watch a few, a few podcasts, Xbox podcasts, PlayStation podcasts, Nintendo podcasts and stuff like that. But it's kind of refreshing to see media people also touching on points that I was making as well, but in a better way. You know, doing it in obviously they've got the their insiders of the industry. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk about and and watch a video regarding um, sacred symbols and their their view on the whole Xbox and start uh, see a thieves possibly coming over to to PlayStation and Nintendo. And something that I forgot to mention is that Sea of Thieves it's six years old and it was actually and I got it from this video. It was actually an Xbox One game. So it's a last gen game. It was in early access. So I don't know why people are so annoyed about about it. But I think this video, this part of the podcast touches on a lot of the things that I was saying, but a lot more as well. And I just want to kind of watch it. But it is nice to sort of, when I see a video like this, I do sort of go, oh, that's what I was saying. So I wasn't talking total nonsense. And it does have that, it does reaffirm me in my own mind of like I do kind of 
semi understand what's sort of going on and different points and what what it would bring to you know money on the table and all that sort of stuff. Because a lot of the time I just think I come on here and just ramble and I do have a, a, a habit of I've got a clear vision of what I want to speak about but then I'll go on a tangent and I'll talk about other stuff and I'll get running and maybe that's the ADHD side of me I don't know but I wanted to just jump in and have a little bit of a watch it's not that long all right number two Tantalizing rumors are percolating that select Xbox aligned first party games may be migrating to competing platforms, including PlayStation. Yes, some games under the Xbox umbrella are already on PlayStation and have been for years. Think Minecraft and its spinoffs, which Xbox purchased more than a decade ago by way of developer Mojang. But that catalog may be about to expand in some unexpected directions. From our perspective, Xbox's publishing structure looks a little bit like this. Truly internal teams in the Microsoft Studios family, teams owned by publishers Microsoft has purchased, which is one degree of separation, and then perhaps a separate degree of a different degree of separation with second party games, which all hardware manufacturers deal with. If rumors are to be believed, a Microsoft Studios game in the form of the mega popular Sea of Thieves, along with a Bethesda published game in the form of Hi Fi Rush, may be en route to PlayStation. The trail of these rumors is fairly complex, so let's defer to the reporting of Jez Corden, a friend of our show, who reported the timeline on Windows Central. Basically, a reliable leaker, YouTuber Nate the Hate, noted that an Xbox game was en route to competitor platforms, one of an, quote, acclaimed game of the year worthy, end quote, pedigree. People immediately connected this to 2023's Hi-Fi Rush from Tango Gameworks, a studio under the Bethesda umbrella, which is in turn under the Xbox umbrella. Since that moment, more chatter has emerged from typically reliable industry people, forum rumors, and so on, indicating that Hi-Fi Rush was per first perhaps coming to Nintendo Switch, but maybe actually coming to PlayStation. This vibes with Jez's own reporting. He notes in part, quote, they say there's no smoke without fire. I will say that it has been suggested to me from very trusted proven sources that Microsoft has been exploring bringing some of its back catalog to other platforms, although some of the details remain vague and unconfirmed, end quote. On top of that, even more interesting news later emerged when Stephen Totillo, writing on his Game File Substack, reported that Sea of Thieves, perhaps one of Xbox's most successful games ever, could be migrating to PlayStation. Totillo notes that Sea of Thieves could come to PlayStation as soon as early this year, and he reports that fellow games writer Jeff Grubb reiterated much of this news on his own podcast. Now, while this falls in line with what Xbox brand CFO Tim Stewart said before the holidays, specifically that Xbox was looking at traditional competitors like Nintendo and PlayStation to place its content, including Game Pass, it does conflict with the PR cleanup head of Xbox Phil Spencer was later dispatched to do. But all of this, coupled with the absolutely blatantly weird refusal to name platforms for Blade at Arcane, adds up to something going on. With an Xbox event planned in the immediate future, it could be that he, we here at, at Sacred Symbols will have to begin paying attention to the potential that Xbox games on PlayStation in some way beyond the current status quo is inevitable. As many people wrote in, Matic Brick wrote in and said, what is up with Xbox and Phil Spencer? Are they going multi-platform or not? Make up your damn mind. He wrote that all in capital letters. Dustin, the, it never ever ends with this shit i swear to god a lot of this comes from their own fumbling around i mean obviously these are leaks as well but they really speak out of both sides of their mouths because knowing that that this is coming from a steven totillo a jez corden uh jeff grubb see if, see if these is coming to playstation <laughs> i mean like it, it seems like that's a thing that's happening it looks like hi-fi rush is coming mm -hmm. to maybe switch and or playstation this is in direct I mean, this this goes against what they've been saying, and may, and and then people look at people people look at me, and they say like, Colin's so stupid. Why does he think it's weird that they won't say what Blades on? Obviously, it's going to be an Xbox game. I'm like, is it really that obvious? I mean, is it? Yeah. Like, I I don't I don't see why that would be obvious, considering all the different weird shit. Like, there's just rules that are made up on a constant basis. Anyway, I'm ranting on. Yeah. What do you think? Well, no, I feel super justified in this as well, because I got a lot of heat last year when I talked about Phil Spencer talking out of the two sides of his mouth. And here's just yet another example of that. And it's funny when these things happen, because it's always there's stipulations like, well, he was talking about these games or he was talking about going forward. And it's like, well, what does it mean? Because we have no idea at this point anymore, specifically in this scenario that's all happening within what a two month period when we talked about, uh, you know, the, 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 the... just want to also <clears throat> point out that this podcast came out, um, after I made the video of, uh, talking about this. So 
just want to sort of put that into context as well. I haven't just watched this and then made my video. Um, so just wanted to sort of point that out there. The guy from the board or whatever. The, oh, Tim Stewart. Yeah, Tim Stewart was talking CFO. about, you know, going multi-platform. And then a few days later, feels like, no, 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 no. And it's like, well... Which is it? Well, because he's like, we don't have any plans to bring Game Pass to PlayStation. And that's why I was saying, um, and people thought I was, it, you know, I, I actually talked to Jez about this because I, I, he was like, I, I really had a very limited amount of time to speak with him. And I'm like, I get that. But I felt like such a powerful follow up would have been. Come on. Like, all right. So what, like, what does that mean? You got to break that down a little bit because that's just you just talked your way out of that. And it's clear, in my opinion, Dustin, that how can you really believe anything this dude says? Like, uh, it just seems like it's just bouncing all over the place. I don't know. It's strange to me. Right. As far as these games switching over and, and being on a different platform, I, it's funny. I, when I was thinking about and seeing, seeing the reaction to this and seeing how Xbox fans felt betrayed by it, while I think there is some, uh, overreaction to with that i kind of get it uh in this case where you have a mixed messaging what feels like every few months mixed messaging and mm -hmm. it would be frustrating if you're hardcore about that platform like we are for playstation then yes be really really frustrating in terms of it actually happening i think this makes a lot of sense i think xbox can kind of have their cake and eat it too, where they can use these games as big draws to Game Pass at release. And then a year later, in the case of Sea of Thieves, a few, a few years later, make money again on it. And it's really not going to detract from Game Pass as a service. The question I have is that are these two games test beds for s testing the waters and see, okay, mm -hmm. well, Maybe these games do really well. We make a lot of money that we can use to fund into Game Pass and support our own service. And let's do that some more. And in particular, with a live ser a live service S game like Sea of Thieves. Um, I, we talked about this earlier with Helldivers being on PS5 and PC. Having it diversified across multiple platforms just means more money. To the point where we know that Marathon a sony owned team they're going to be releasing that on xbox i honestly think a smart business decision would if sony did this if they have a successful live service game maybe it's an exclusive for a year or two widen up the audience even more and it, something like concord i could see that releasing on xbox someday because these games are about the long-term money that they can someday because these games are about the long-term money that they can make hi-fi rush is a little bit of a different case that is more interesting to me in that they don't really have any imperative to bring it over other than just the initial sales from it but i wonder if there's more i mean i wonder if there's a reality where some of their other live service s games come to playstation think about halo infinite mm-hmm on PS5, imagine the player the collection. Mel the meltdown would be great. Over that would be. Oh man, yeah, I don't Dude. know. I, yeah, and it's funny. I a few uh, right before Christmas, I played just one night. Uh, Jimmy Champagne and I played Halo Infinite, and I was like, you know what? It's pretty damn good right now. It's uh, it's sad that this game, for most of us, came and went and was disappointing in how it the the follow up after launch, but playstation release would certainly would be the thing to change the waters on that but uh i've said now i'm curious what what chris thinks about this yeah i mean it's it's interesting it, it is definitely frustrating from a from a messaging perspective it's it's frustrating not to know where a big company like this stands uh just just from our perspective because it makes our jobs a little bit a little bit harder not to say that it's you know we're not steel mill workers or anything but it's 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 annoying to have to not to not really know for sure what we should or shouldn't be paying attention to for our for this show specifically um and you know they've, they've had that line before where it's like you know games with a heritage will will stay on other platforms and it's like well see if these has no heritage on playstation so what what do you mean <laughs> like the messaging is completely fucked 
and I know Maddie knows this too. I know they went went all in on this on on Duke too, but on the frustration between their their messaging, we even talked about that a little bit on Summit Sign as well. But I I don't think this is necessarily a bad idea. I think I think it would be smart of Xbox to look at PlayStation like PlayStation looks at PC in some way, where like they can almost double dip. Where like they have their platforms of they have they already have PC and Xbox as, as their main platforms. And so they they get a lot of value out of that. But then why not get like this huge extra dip many, many years later when you have a product that is more polished, more finished, and ultimately more definitive for an audience that specifically is not only very large, but specifically buys their games. It's kind of smart. If you really if you really think about like where Sea of Thieves is, where Halo the Master Chief Collection even is, or where where Halo Infinite is, or where these these um specifically these live service games that have been through iteration after iteration, where they end up at a certain amount of time, like some good value on uh on a competitor's platform and and a good opportunity to monetize even further. So like I don't know, I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad strategy. It's just frustrating not to know what that strategy is, or to have that strategy either talked down to or obfuscated or kind of shrouded by the people literally employing it. That's really where the frustration point is for me. But I've, I've long been a very agnostic person with, with my platform of choice. I think, I think it'd be great for most games to come to everywhere. Quite, quite frankly, it'd be great to see. I would love to see Halo Infinite on PlayStation. That'd be sick. I would, I would love specifically more to see the collection on PlayStation because the heritage of that is so, is so huge for a lot of for I, I can imagine that being like a big deal for a lot of people, especially because a lot of PlayStation audience these days are people who used to be on Xbox or not a lot necessarily, but like a sizable chunk for sure of people switched over Xbox one to PS4. So it'd be a nice come to home, like coming home moment in some way. But I don't know. The messaging is frustrating, but the plan is something that I support. I think it's cool. Yeah. Sorry. I'm writing a note here. I There's a, a few things I want to say. I, I think. Well, Owen S. wrote in, said, hey, CDC, with the rumors surrounding Sea of Thieves and Hi-Fi Rush coming to be to different platforms, it's hard It's hard to fight a feeling that Xbox is a platform as eroding. If Xbox bows out of the high-powered console market, would this be a positive or negative for PlayStation gamers? I don't think that this is going to happen until the long term. So I don't think it's like something you even have to consider, but I do consider it an, an inevitability for all the console manufacturers to not be in hardware anymore, but but for that to happen to Xbox first. And they're saying it. This is where I think there's a, a there's a disconnect in the messaging because they're very annoying in how inconsistent they are. And they have an audience that really doesn't hold their feet to the fire for some reason, at least vocally, from what it seems like on social media and others, where they just soak this shit up in whatever they say they believe and like they can just be pissed on and told it's raining in some sense. And I think that is strange. And that goes into the messaging inconsistencies that you guys were talking about. But I don't think we're in a situation where like there's going to be no Xbox console for many years still. We're talking about again a, a, the long term, but they are telling you that it doesn't matter to them anymore. They lost this whole thing to Nintendo in some sense and to Sony in some sense. And their concession to that is just the way they've talked about Game Pass for many years, but now they're in between a rock and a hard place because it's clear that Game Pass is flat and that Xbox consoles are diminishing and as we say Xbox consoles sold are captive Game Pass audience members, so you don't have to expand beyond that. So they really do necessarily have to look to these other platforms. It's it's almost an inevitability. That's what I said in my write-up. It's like, this is the beginning of this happening. And in some sense, Microsoft has always had that vision of being multi-platform, if necessary, of thinking about it and tinkering with it. As I've said before, at IGN, we had playable builds of Halo DS which never came out, but you could play straight up. You can play against the people on other DSs and stuff like that. That blew my mind when I, <clears throat> when I heard that, that there was playable builds of Halo on the Nintendo DS. That blew my mind. Blew my mind. And that was an early foray of them trying to think about getting off platform and, and expanding the audience. And as I've said before, though, people like to mess around with it. And I know it's an old piece of news to a lot of people. Like Sony and Microsoft were talking about bringing Master Chief Collection to PS4 early in PS4's life cycle. And my my source on that is literally un, unimpeachable. Like, that's why I'm so confident in saying it. it's like just totally unimpeachable. So they've been dealing with this reality. Remember Gears of War 
although it was through Epic, they did port it to PS3 and it was running on PS3. They do. Mm -hmm. So this has kind of been percolating and and I think now the necessity is is getting there. Listen, Sea of Thieves is six years old. It's like, who cares, dude? Yeah, <laughs> they're not making anything on that game anymore compared to what they used to make on it. It's certainly a thing that people on Game Pass probably really like. I would imagine at this point you would have gotten a lot more value just buying the game um, and then playing the, the expansions and all that. But it's one of its most popular games and they probably look at it and say, like, why not? It's like what you, like you guys were saying, double dip, triple dip. We really have nothing to lose here. If we were going to get someone from Sea of Thieves, we would have gotten them between March of 2018 when the game came out and today many years later and so i don't think it's like that big of a deal i think yeah. hi-fi rush is more interesting because i do wonder what the intent is with that and i do wonder if it's something as simple as being a one-off and this is just a random guess i mean i have no idea if this is true but it's probably a bummer to work at a studio where no one in your country is playing your game you know like straight up like Mm, your game is not available to your neighbor to your family you have, they have to go buy an xbox or play on pc or whatever and it's probably nice to be able to be, be able to go to someone like oh here's a switch version of it <laughs> yeah. and maybe it's as simple as that of tango having some sort of cultural continued cultural relevance in their home country i, I think it maybe is that simple it could also be the idea that like hi-fi rush is really their first game of real consequence in a very very long time like the, as far as like critical acclaim goes and it would be kind of useful to have something that is that high in quality as almost like a you, you can imagine this game coming to coming to playstation and having an xbox splash screen on it and then right after that xbox splash screen you get like one of the best games of the year and you're like oh i wonder something cooking i wonder what's going on over there yeah yeah it, it, it could be as simple as that it's like good advertising not only is it good advertising for them but it's also you know i mean <laughs> Like you said, having a Switch for dude, the Switch version of that game is gonna kill, I bet. Like it's such that is such a good game for the Switch, it's insane. But yeah, I mean, why not double triple dip on something like that? Well, it, to the point, Chris, like you're making too, it's it could be an experiment very similar to the ones we know that Sony runs on all sorts of games that we went into on Sacred Symbols Plus and have gone into in the past where yeah. they just do random things. I do believe that the God of War DLC, the Ragnarok DLC, Valhalla or whatever, is an experiment. Like, I, mm. I believe it's so value rich that they could have easily sold it, as I understand it, and that they didn't intentionally to see what would happen or how it would affect sales of the other game and how people would talk about it. And so this could be a very similar thing. What just happens if we do yeah. this? Like, what does it mean? And I think the only thing I would really agree with is, to, to your point, Dustin, is it probably is frustrating for fans just because you don't really know what you're getting because there is often this this uh there is this comment that that I think is fair enough where it's like we it never goes the other direction and what's funny about that from a PlayStation fan's point of view although I don't really give a shit about this stuff I mean I think in fact we often say I think there are very specific games where they should be as on many platforms as possible I think that makes the most sense but it's like no God of War is never going to be on Xbox like Uncharted's never going to be on Xbox. The Last of Us is never going to be on Xbox. Like that is true, but there's that isn't true in the reverse. Like I imagine that Halo is going to be on PlayStation. You know, um, and I think the bigger thing that's going to buckle and what I really want to see is, and that's this is what I was talking about. In my write up was the divisions and how they look at different things. Like, are they treating Microsoft Studios as the closest held studios, right? that doesn't really seem to be evidentiary because or in evidence because of like psychonauts now sea of thieves if that's true which it seems like it's going to be and then like you have this this concentric circle where like another one would be bethesda and i'm working on the i'm function i've been functioning on the on the premise that doom is going to be on playstation like there's going to be certain games i think that are going to come from this that particular family especially that are going to confuse xbox fans and force the Xbox executives to stop speaking out of both sides of their mouths and just say what what's real. Like, why are you so afraid of saying it? Yeah, it's just that's strange. It just it's a little clownish, in my opinion. It's confusing. just because like the reality bears out and then you have to pretend that you didn't say or act a certain way. And dude, material things materially change, but not that quickly. It was weeks ago. And I know people are going to say like, he didn't. He said 
there wasn't any Xbox plans to bring Game Pass to these other platforms. And I'm like, yes, I know. And that's why they should have delved deeper because we probably would have gotten even more weird answers that would indicate yeah. these kinds of things. So, but, but Sea of Thieves, it's like, that's a, that's a, that's a no lose situation. That game is so yeah. old, dude. That was an Xbox One game. I think people forget that. I did. Yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, it was an Xbox One game. It was an early access Xbox One game, too. So it was even playable before that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Their, their messaging is just frustrating. And it, and it kind of calls into question, like, everything else. Like, like what is, where's, where's Hellblade, then? I know Hellblade's going to be exclusive to Xbox, but, like, for how long? <laughs> you know? How long? What about Starfield? Yeah, Starfield's a bigger, an, an even bigger one, where it's like, why... Why wouldn't there be a definitive edition of Starfield on PlayStation at some point when all the DLC is out? Like, why wouldn't you do that? And you, you say, like, oh, you're operating under the assumption that Doom would be on PlayStation. I, I agree on some level because not only is there a heritage there, but also just because it, it'd be dumb to turn away that amount of money. But maybe maybe there's also, like, a, a part of it that's like, well, listen, we, we're the shooter box. We got the shooter. If you want to play, come play this amazing shooter, you got to come here. It's like, well, that makes sense, too. Yeah. I think, I, it, I I think there's no a world what the plan is. I think unfortunately, because I love Wolfenstein, I think there's a, a, a for PlayStation, I think there's a world where like Doom would come over, but like Wolfenstein wouldn't. Something like that, you know? And mm, you yeah. draw them in a little bit, like you're saying, into that into that space. But I, I also think there's an imperative that we have to talk about, guys, too, which is that Microsoft spent a lot of money on all this shit. That's and the big that's the big they thing. They gotta make the money back. And um the value proposition of Game Pass is gonna be very, very high when Call of Duty and all the Activision stuff's folded in there, it's going to be awesome. Imagine if you get World of Warcraft in there somehow, like a console version of that. But then you look at it and you think, what about the potential a la carte sales and inclusion? I mean, what about even getting Hi-Fi Rush into PlayStation Plus? I mean, would they make an experiment like that for PlayStation Plus Extra or something and like get some sort of licensure and be like, okay, let's grow with another license and and so on and so forth and maybe we make money that way it just seems i get why xbox fans are frustrated about that but i think that that's maybe not the ps plus stuff but but more games are going to be coming I, I imagine and i do understand that it's frustrating in the other direction i guess the only thing you can really say is that you can make the argument that now you would really want the playstation over the xbox because you would assume that now it would all be playable ultimately there and that's kind of the sign the, the sign they're sending maybe but i think that's too dramatic for like the now for either in the short or midterm i think it's too dramatic like hellblade i believe hellblade is not going to be on playstation anytime soon i believe that there are just certain games that we're, soon. yeah 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 exactly but but that's true where a god of war it's like never yeah you know? right like it never is it going to be on xbox and so yeah th there is there is a difference there but w did i express to you guys the theory was it on this show or was it on one of the many other shows that we do where I feel like PlayStation is settling into an Apple iPhone style situation. Did I explain this to you guys or was this somewhere else? Yeah. Where, yeah. yeah. Where just to reiterate for people out there where the sales are so inertial for PlayStation and seem to really not, it doesn't matter what the comp competitor is doing. It doesn't matter what the reality of the, the situation is in the moment. It doesn't matter what the power differential is. It doesn't matter any of those things. Like people just want a PlayStation and it feels kind of like an iPhone where They've just kind of Sony like I don't and I, I express this like I don't give a shit that I can get a better phone than what I have now with an Android much more powerful. I'm like, I don't care. I don't give a shit. There's nothing you can tell me about another phone that's going to make me not want an iPhone. Something just happened in my mind at some point where that was just the way it was because I'm I'm a dedicated consumer to that product. And I feel like PlayStation has gotten into that space and it might explain why people just kind of default to it at this point. And Microsoft might see that and say, like, well these people buy a lot of games and as, as you noted, Chris, it's like, why not, why not tap into that? I think it's a, it's a fascinating thing, but Sean Mason wrote into us, friend of the show said, Hey CDC, I trust this message reaches you in good health. I've noticed a significant amount of negative reactions surrounding the speculation about hi-fi Russian sea of these potentially expanding the PlayStation as gaming enthusiasts. It's puzzling to comprehend why some individuals become distressed about the possibility of these games losing their exclusivity. Wouldn't it be more, more beneficial for us to support the idea of making these exceptional games available to a wider audience, thereby increasing sales and, and providing developers with more resources to create additional games of similar quality? To totally, but it, it really just depends on the strategy. But I think a lot of the mentality that you're talking about, Sean, is fed into not by normal people, but by really bad actors on social media 
that are so obnoxious and and on YouTube and other places too that just dwell in this console war space and then pretend that everyone dwells in that space too. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like a total projection. And it's crazy that that sort of mentality really does seep into people's brains and poisons it to the degree where I like I sit here and tell you I think it would be a really great idea to get as many of those games as a services on as many that PlayStation's making on as many platforms as possible because it's the the best sal- best path to salvation for their success. Yeah. But these kinds of people are the kinds of people that like make sizzle reels for Xbox. Like and don't get paid for it. They make they make art like key Doing art free PR for of them. the studios. One person <clears throat> remember made a, a reel of Redfall footage. And before it came out, it was like, look how good it is. It's like, dude, could you imagine Sacred Symbols ever, ever <laughs> doing something like that? Making key art and fucking sizzle reels and making compilations to make games look good. It's comical clown shit. And that's the stuff that sets the predicate for the way people talk about games in a lot of spaces. And it's those people that poisoned everyone into thinking that something like Sea of Thieves coming to PlayStation is the end of all things. Period. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that. Anything else that we want to add on this? It looks like that that, that, that it's happening. Do you know what I mean? And I, I don't really want to go through it all again. There is a previous video that I did. Um, I would really appreciate if people went and watched it and sort of uh, give their opinion. There was a couple of comments on there that uh, that really, you know, when people sort of, when I see the likes and the comments, it 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 really sort of boosts my uh confidence and and it kind of makes me sort of think that i am not wasting my time doing this um but i do i kind of like to just have my sort of little two cents on it this channel's very small it i'm trying to build it slowly but it is sort of just me spouting off um unscripted um what i kind of feel and see as a consumer um you know I, I wanted to watch the whole section of that podcast because I don't want to be one of these people that just clips something out of context to 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 make it, you know, to use it in the sort of... Con- and this isn't a console war video at all. Um, but yeah, confidence is a big thing that I sort of struggle with on here. And I, I'm trying to get... I'm trying to break down that barrier of not re-watching videos and deleting things and saying, you know, watching something and going, well, I didn't like how I sounded there. I'm going to delete it. I came very close to deleting that previous video because I wasn't, I didn't have that self-confidence in what I was saying, really. Although I sort of did in my own mind, but at the same time, I was sort of like, I'm sort of spouting off here and I don't just, you know, I can't, I was a bit uneasy about some of the things that I was sort of saying, but just to see, and I've watched many other podcasts as well, and they're sort of saying the same thing that, you know, I don't feel like all the big exclusives that are going to be exclusive to Xbox are going to be coming. Everything's going to be coming. Just because just because Sea of Thieves and Hi-Fi Rush probably going to come over to PlayStation and Nintendo it doesn't exactly mean that, you know, Hellblade or, you know, other exclusives down the line, Indiana Jones and that sort of thing, are going to be day one exclusive on PlayStation. But it's also the messaging behind it. It's very confusing. Like they said, Phil Spencer, I said as well, he talks out of both sides of his mouth. The messaging's atrocious. They need to be more transparent in what they're doing. Um, they've spent all this money and they want to make that money back. Like they, like, like uh, there's loads of money on the table, like I said. it's, it's you, you have to sort of look at it from a, from a business point of view. Um, and I'm not a business person at all. Do you know what I mean? But you have to sort of see that they've spent all this money and... Xbox sales aren't great. Game Pass apparently is not flat. It's flat, according to to to, that, to them guys. Um, I like Game Pass. I think it's a great idea, but to have you know all these games just be. I mean, it's just the messaging. That's that's it. It's the messaging. That's the problem with Xbox. It's the messaging. It's every time Phil Spencer says something, he contradicts himself. It's it's not being transparent. If I was a diehard Xbox fan. That I would be pissed off because exactly you don't know what's you don't know what's going on, and I do see a lot of people on on the on the internet on Twitter up in arms and saying that how can Xbox do this blah blah blah, 
And I, I would be if you, if you are that hardcore on Xbox, you know, I would encourage everyone to 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 buy and play on everything because then you cover you cov- covered all bases then, and you don't have to be um, committed or a slave to one company. But obviously, people aren't in that situation, and people do want to defend their purchase. They don't they don't want to be seen like they've bought uh, a product that's underwhelming or not performing well. And they I understand the 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 notion to defend your purchase and stuff, but also touching on the fact that these people on the internet on Twitter and I could name names, you know, the 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 Colt Eastwoods and stuff like that. They are in many ways the the free PR people for Xbox. They're the ones that are constantly reporting on these these things and trying to constantly paint Xbox in a good light that everything's fine and everything's kosher, everything's cushy. And you get them on X on the PlayStation side of it. But like I said, Xbox is in a really strange position at the moment. It's it's crazy what's going on. I I, I it's so foggy and convoluted that, you know, I d- you don't know what's happening. You know, you've got Game Pass on on PC and Xbox, you've got you can you know you don't have to have an Xbox now. You can just play on PC. There's there's going to be there's going to be I could know, I could see a world where we get Game Pass on smart televisions where you just plug in a, a USB and you you know use your your controller that way. They are in the subscription selling business according to them. They're not in the console selling business. They're not trying to you know it's 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 all stuff that they've said and it's really damning stuff like I've previously said in 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 my previous video. So the messaging needs to change with Xbox. There needs to be more transparency. I really feel for people that are so invested in Xbox and you know they, they that is their sole console that they haven't got a clue and they're seeing all these things coming up see a thieves coming over. I could fully see Halo Infinite because a free to play game coming over. I said that in the previous video. I could see I think it would be great. I think I would love to play that on 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 PlayStation. Granted I usually play on on Xbox, but to have that ability to play Halo with my PlayStation buddies uh and Xbox as well. So I kind of just wanted to sort of come on and talk a little bit about just sort of re reaffirm of what I was saying to have it sort of said in a more articulate way from people that have worked in the industry. Um and whether you like Colin Moriarty or not, I mean, I I do. I like you know many different people on the internet, but I realise that there's that's a more professional kind of version of what I was saying. Way professional, you know. This is just me in a fucking in a in a spare bedroom talking about you know computer games and stuff like that. But like I said, I I kind of I need to get past that barrier of being a bit more confident and having a bit more self-confidence and being a bit more assertive in what I'm saying and having that sort of uh, drive to sort of go, this is what I think and I'm fucking sticking to it um, rather than second guess myself and delete videos and stuff. I wish my biggest regret on this channel is, is deleting all my old videos. I started this channel in my bedroom in my parents' house and I used an iPhone and I was sat on the floor and I used to, I used to have a screenshot of a, I'd pause a game on a TV behind me and I would talk about a topic and it looked so terrible and I was sort of embarrassed in a way that I deleted all my old vid- old videos, but I wish I'd kept them on there to sort of show how my channels kind of sort of evolved and, you know, buying equipment, getting my own house and, you know, having all this sort of, you know, I'm sort of trying to, I'm dabbling with, I'm going to be dabbling with editing. I've just been talking to another friend of mine who's got a, a gaming channel, a Big Papa Sparks, who's just started out on YouTube. Uh, he's from back home. Great guy. <clears throat> he's pointing me in the direction of this video editing software that I'm going to try and have a dabble with as well. So, it, I, it, you know, it's it's I am trying to sort of grow as a as a YouTuber and you know try and sort of you know, maybe make it an intro, but, uh, but I, I kind of feel like this is sort of a very basic channel where it's just start the video, get into the topic, end the video and that's it, you know, but I'd like to sort of try and build on, on, on the things on this channel and stuff, but I don't necessarily think what's happening with things coming over and like, there's games on PlayStation that could come over to, to Xbox, but I don't think like like I said in my video as well, God of War's not coming over. You know, it's just it's just not. PlayStation's in a different place to Xbox, Nintendo's in a different place to PlayStation and Xbox and it's just a very interesting conversation, but to, to to act like the sky is falling and 
that this is the end and all this sort of stuff is crazy. I mean, they're all, they're rumored to be bringing out a new console in 2026, so I don't know what that's all about, considering they're saying that we're not in the console selling business anymore. So that, again, is double speak. Um, but yeah, that's just a video I wanted to sort of come on and sort of um, reaffirm for myself what, what I was saying, really, from a different sort of viewpoint and sort of... Uh, massage my own ego a bit which i don't really do that often because i don't think i have a an ego um so that's it just wanted to come on and sort of have a little bit of a, a different perspective you know those things in that podcast that was that, that i didn't mention um that were that's interesting as well um if you want to give this video a like feel free it spurs me on to sort of do more um and gives me that little boost i also try to read all the comments. I mean, I do read all the comments because I don't get that many comments, but I wanted to sort of just um, do a sort of follow-up on that bit of news there. So I hope everyone has a lovely week and is playing uh, a bunch of games that they enjoy. I'm going to jump back into Final Fantasy 16 and play some Halo Infinite today. That's my plan for the day off. Um, so I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks very much and take care. All the best.